Welcome to the Colossal Can King 7 guide. This video will walk through the new bus analysis software and explain some of its most powerful features. Let's get started. When you launch the application, you will be greeted by the project menu. Here you can choose to start a new project or open an existing one. Now that the application is open, let's go over some basic navigation. In the top left of the app, there are a few buttons. From left to right, they are Start Stop Measurement, New Project, Open Project, and Save Project. On the right, there are buttons for opening the Settings menu, switching between Dark and Light mode, and a button for toggling the Log panel at the bottom. Finally, on the left side of the window, there are two buttons. The first is the tab Cam King launches showing, which is the measurement tab, and the second is the workplaces tab. The measurement tab is a menu that allows a user to add channels and set up custom targets for bus communications, such as a message logger. Let's add a source to begin using Can King. Click the source button to open a drop down menu and select Can Channel. A menu will appear with some options for our new source, such as a name, which interface channel should be assigned to this source, whether it is CAN or CANFD, the bus speed, and signal jump width, as well as whether or not the device is in silent mode, should the device support this feature. Press Create, and the new source will appear on the Measurement tab. Below the source, there are a few buttons, such as reopening the Edit menu, removing the source, disabling it, or going bus on and off. For this demonstration, we will be adding both channels of a Kvasser Memorator Pro 2XHS V2 so that we can monitor the bus with one channel while we send messages with the other. Now that we have the sources set up, let's send a message. Here on the Workplace tab, we can see what we call views. These are windows that serve specific functions or offer certain features which can be arranged as you see fit. By clicking one of the arrows on the edge of the view, we can create another pane for an additional view. Clicking on the drop down menu to select a view will display four possible options. For this example, we will add an additional view on the left side of our workplace and then add a can send view, bus statistics view, and a can trace. Should we want to create more workspaces, we can click the plus symbol in the upper left to create a new workspace that can be switched between like tabs on a browser. And if we need to edit one of our workspaces, the edit button on the right brings up the edit menu. Simply hovering over the right side of a workspace tab will display a close button for removing workspaces you no longer need. Now that we have our workplace set up, Let's start the measurement by clicking the play button in the upper left and send a message. To send the message, first select which channel will be sending the message in the can send view. Configure the message as needed and when you're ready, press send. The message should appear in the can trace view with the channel selected in the can bus statistics view, the bus status and load can be seen below. Next, let's look at how to set up traffic generator. Return to the Measurement tab and add a new source, selecting Traffic Generator. A new window will appear with a litany of options for customizing the generator. For our example, we will set the generator to randomize the identifier and the message data to simulate the noise of many other nodes communicating on the bus outside of the scope of what we're trying to analyze and potentially capture. With our Traffic Generator created, let's return to the Workplaces tab and start another measurement. All of the traffic generated by our generator should be visible in the can trace view, but now, when we send our individual message, it becomes a little hard to find amongst the noise. By clicking the Fix Position button in the upper left of the can trace window, we can sort messages by their can identifier, meaning our message, which in our example has an identifier of zero, appears above the messages below. Should there be a DBC file in use, the Fix Position button also allows for more information to be displayed based on the file. One or more of the advanced features of Can King is the ability to log messages. To do this, we need to add a new target to the Measurement tab. Click the Target drop-down menu and select Can Message Logger. This will open a new window for customizing the logger. 
The message logger supports a number of file formats, but for this example, we will be using the CSV format. Once the format has been selected and the file name has been given, we can set up the start and stop triggers. The logger can trigger at the start of measurement, wait until a timer is expired, or even trigger after receiving a specific message or signal value. For this example, our logger will trigger on start of measurement and stop when measurement is stopped. Before starting another measurement, let's set up a filter. Click the plus button on our CAN source and add a CAN message filter. Should you have a DBC file, it can also be added here. The filter can be set up to pass or block certain identifiers, including ranges, by using a hyphen between two identifiers with commas separating each value. Filters can also be set to filter multiple sources. Our filter is set to only allow messages with CAN identifier 0 through so that only our messages are logged in our message logger. For more information on Kvasser software and hardware products, please visit kvasser.com. Thank <laughs> you.